The next five years are going to be a very interesting five years because I believe that by the time 2030 swings by, we are going to be in a decade of divergence. A lot of people have been recently looking at all of the benefits of actually eating clean and healthy. And I know that like that's clear and obvious and everyone always says, oh yeah, it's my goal for this year to eat healthier and everything. But I think that there has been a ton of awareness checks going around for just how fucked up our food pyramid and our food system has been over the decades of carbs and sugars and calories and whether or not you need your macros or don't need your macros and all that other good jazz. I'm not here to get technical about it because quite frankly, I'm not a dietitian and I'm not a fitness YouTuber. I'm just a dude that's trying to help you understand where you should be in the coming decades. So where should you be within the next five years? It is my understanding that with how inflation is going and with the way that fast food companies are currently trying to push cheapening prices, it only makes sense that those who are actually willing to learn how to properly budget and grocery shop and do the things that they need to do to separate themselves from the mainstream crowd are going to be the ones that are actually going to thrive and survive. Now, what exactly do I mean by that? Well, I'm sure you've seen the headlines of like Wendy's doing the whole um, adjusted pricing based on times and demand and everything. And the timelines of McDonald's and Taco Bell and a lot of other fast food companies dropping their prices to, to accommodate for median salary workers. They're going to be the esoteric elites or the famished foodies. I'm going to call them famished foodies because realistically fast food really doesn't fill you up with anything good anyways. Now there's unadded ramifications to this of course, but one of the other things that I wanted to talk about is the fact that there's also been a massive movement of the fitness industry lately. Now I'm sure that you've noticed that there's been a large change in the atmosphere for self-improvement YouTubers. Whether it's Hamza, Ali Abdul, Andrew Tate, Sneeko, all of the quote unquote, well, especially Fresh and Fit with that controversy that went around. Uh, if you know, you know. <laughs> but um, basically, the self-improvement space is dying. And I don't see that as a bad thing because it has already done what it's needed to do. And what has it needed to do? It needed to make sure that the next generation of young men be able to take care of themselves and find friends that are also willing to hold you accountable. However, that does open the gate for other influencers, such as myself, to update you on the next level of life, which beyond self-improvement is of course actually finding and creating the family that you want to create with the woman of your dreams in the future so that way you can have a wonderful babies have a wonderful house wonderful land and be able to do on your land what you choose to do and i want to be one of those influencers that helps guide the next generation of young men into how to actually properly hold your relationships hold yourselves accountable, make sure that you navigate arguments properly and thoroughly so that way you don't end up damaging anything that you have worked so hard for. You know, how to identify when a situation is going south, when to know when to defuse a situation, the whole entire nine yards. I think it's more important than ever that even though the young male self-improvement space has gotten much, much better, it's also still stagnated. Think about it for a second. How, much, how long has it been since you've last plateaued? Now this doesn't mean that you haven't done anything. However, what it does mean is think about the last time that you hit a new PR and then you've been stuck on that PR. Or how, when was the last time that you ran more than five miles consecutively? You can go ahead and like think about that for a second because it really does hold true when you really think about it. If you self-reflect and you think about it, 
you have been stuck. And yes, you have been doing all of the good habits, but maybe you've been stuck doing the same good habits over and over and you haven't actually been improving on most areas of your life, which is where I want to change things. I want to help make sure that the next generation of young men are able to actually navigate the throes of their late 20s, possibly even the early 30s, because as you know, I will be turning 30 here in a couple of weeks. When I turn 30, I'm going to be making a video covering what I would have done differently in my 20s. Overall, the main point is that I would have done many things differently. I would have made more friends. I would have gotten out more. I would have done more community service. I would have understood how credit scores worked, how mortgages worked, how life in general worked. So that's going to be probably an hour long video, if I'm going to be totally honest. And it's going to go over a lot of really good, necessary things for the young American man and their upcoming struggle in the upcoming world for the decade of divergence between 2025 and 2035. Because it's going to be our responsibility to make sure that we can all help each other in the times that we need to actually help each other. I've been through my fair share of struggles in my 20s. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to not know what you want to do with your life because it's also going to come to a point where there's really not going to be too many good esoteric options in grocery stores because organic and home range and all of those fancy buzzword terms don't mean anything these days. They're genuinely just buzzword terms that don't have any merit or impact on whether or not a chain grocery store is organic or not. And the only real way that you can guarantee that whatever you're buying is organic or not organic or locally owned or what have you is by actually going to your local farmer's market and going up to the farmer market stalls and actually direct buying from the farmers at the farmer's market. Now, almost every single city in existence in the Western world, in America at least, has a farmer's market of one kind or another. So you can't bullshit me and tell me that you don't have a farmer's market or that you're too lazy to look it up because it's literally just a Google search away on Google Maps, farmer's market near me. And you'll find one within a 15 minute drive. I guarantee you, even if you don't have a car, you can bike there. If you don't have a bike, you can freaking walk, dude. Maybe not even five miles away. And if you've been on the self-improvement journey for quite some time, then that five mile walk is going to be absolutely nothing to you because then that's going to be a 10 mile walk, or 11 miles because you're going to be walking around. But my point is, is that you're going to be spending a lot of time exercising while getting your fresh food off of a farm that hasn't been mass produced. Now this video has gone on for a lot longer than I anticipated it to, but my point still stands. It's going to be a very interesting next five to 10 years. There's gonna be the esoteric elites and the famished foodies. And it's going to get to a cutting point where you are going to have to decide whether or not you're going to do the research and the proper steps necessary in order to make sure that you are going to be part of the next generation legacy so that way you can have a family that you're gonna be proud to have, or if you're going to succumb to the societal pressure of inflation, of the, of the cronies up top in the government, and you're going to end up falling victim to procrastination because you wanted to just sit there and blame the system rather than do something about it and actually live your life. And it is something that not a lot of people are actually discussing these days because there's not really too much fear around it. And you should be moving in fear, but also moving in faith because there's just no room for error. You need to treat these next five to 10 years like your life depends on it because your life does depend on it. Inflation is happening. Food prices are rising. Fast food companies are gonna be replacing their already cheap ingredients with even cheaper ingredients, so that way they can lower their costs, and it's gonna affect people's health more than ever. 
there's going to be an even bigger divide between people who are actually living healthy versus people who are living unhealthily and those who can budget properly, cook properly, and actually get their ingredients that they use for cooking from local sources, whether it's a butcher or a farmer's market or even direct source from a farm, those people that are not going to be lazy and actually do the research required to actually live their lives the way that they should be living it are going to be the ones that are going to be thriving and succeeding in the coming decade. But that's just my two cents. Who knows? Maybe I'm just a dude that doesn't know what I'm talking about. But if you enjoyed what I was talking about, I would really appreciate it if you left a like on this video, if you subscribe to my channel. And also let me know in the comments below, what do you think that I should grow aside from the lettuce, basil, and spinach that I put in these pots? Um, all jokes aside, anyways, take care, and I will see you in the next one.